Did you meet some nice ponies there? Some. Really? Did you see Wild Bull Hickok? Oh, what about Calamity Mae? And I thought the fans were bad when it came to ponifying everything. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Keenan47, aka Wolfkeen, and welcome to another edition of my My Little Pony Vlogs for Season 2. Today, I am talking about The Last Roundup, written by Amy Kitten Rogers. Damn it, Amy! Yes, I'm going to be saying that a lot for Season 2. This is another episode I don't like, unfortunately. And that's because The Last Roundup, well, if I'm being honest... I could sum this episode up in one word. Boring. This is one of the most boring episodes I've seen of season two, if not of the whole show. Because nothing interesting happens in this episode. Like, nothing interesting happens. And that's just being honest. I know some people are about to talk about a particular scene that was interesting, but I'm going to say this right here, right now. I'm not going to talk about it. And that's because it has no bearing on the story, and it's short enough that it doesn't really matter, and plus it caused a controversy back in 2011. So, not talking about it, and no comments about it on my video. I'm being honest. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. The episode starts with basically us looking at Applejack going through a training regimen. Apparently, she's planning on going to the equestrian rodeo. What we learn is that um, in Ponyville, she's the top rodeo pony in Ponyville. So she decides to try her look at the equestrian rodeo. One of the main reasons she decides to go to the equestrian rodeo is that she plans on donating the prize money to help repair Town Hall, which is in some pretty bad disrepair at this point. <clears throat> so the ponies of Ponyville decide to give her a great send-off to the equestrian rodeo. I find, this to be really, I find this to be very relatable because I've been in a situation like this. I entered a Counter-Strike tournament when I was younger once. Like, I entered a Counter-Strike tournament with a team that I was a part of, and I could, I was given quite a send-off for it because there was quite a bit of prize money involved if we won. So I can relate with this situation. So I think like a, a, a week passes or something like that, and they're already um, prepping for Applejack's return by having like a surprise party for her. However, instead of Applejack coming around, a male pony comes with a telegram, which apparently says that Applejack is not coming back to Ponyville and that she'll send the money soon. This ends up getting the ponies of Ponyville to wonder, including her family, like Apple Bloom, Big Mac, and uh, Granny Smith. They begin wondering why is it that Applejack doesn't want to come back. So Twilight and her friends has the idea of looking for her. So they head off to the equestrian rodeo to find out where she is. They ask around and they do find out where she is and they end up taking a train which takes them further into this area known as Dodge Junction. See, this is something I do like because they do dabble into more areas of Equestria. I do like this thing, I do like this idea that they dabbled into another area of Equestria instead of just bringing it like Appaloosa or something like that. Dodge Junction is its own area and it's a western kind of area too. So, very interesting. So, after a bit of a, a stupid like bathroom joke they do find applejack and they find out that she's working for this lady known as cherry jubilee who basically um hired applejack to be her new uh you know to help her work with the cherries cherry jubilee says that applejack won a lot of ribbons at the equestrian rodeo but you could tell by applejack's face that she's not telling the whole story applejack says that she wanted a change of pace like a change of scenery so she decided to work at cherry jubilee's cherry farm to uh, basically, you know, get a change of pace. So she refuses to talk about what happened and go back to Ponyville. So the remain five try to come up with a plan. The first plan is really stupid. They try to uh, become Applejack's cherry sorters, and they try to talk to her indirectly, hoping that she'll, you know, like, talk about what happened at the rodeo. That's kind of stupid, if you ask my honest opinion. Isn't that kind of like in the realms of manipulation look i understand that if your friend is in a bad situation you should try to talk to them but trying to force them to say something that they don't want to is not a good thing it's never a good thing to force someone to say what they don't want to say because that can end up making them hate you even more 
And that seems to be the case because as Applejack gets more angry and angry, she's running faster and faster, causing the Cherry Sorter to go faster and faster, and basically puts the whole thing into chaos to the point where when she does stop, the cherries go flying into her and she gets covered in cherries. So the main six decide to stop playing nice. Really, main six? That was playing nice? Like, constantly badgering her until she said something? That's annoying, that nice. And they decide to basically have someone else try. So Pinkie Pie goes to talk to Applejack, and Applejack does not want any questions. Of course, Pinkie Pie starts asking random questions and talk about random crap, basically just talking to her to a point that Applejack gets annoyed. I'm sorry, guys, but I really feel like that the Remain 5 in this episode were royal dicks in this episode, because, like I said, you can't force someone to say something they don't want to. That is bad friendship right there, because that shows you not, and you not only have no respect for their word, but you have no respect for their friendship as well. Because, here's the thing, if there was something going through my mind and I didn't want to talk about it right away, does that give my friends the right to pester me and bother me to the point that I finally tell them? No, it doesn't. It doesn't give them any right to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get more and more angry with them. I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised Applejack didn't get angry with her friends, because I would have. <clears throat> so Applejack Pinky promises to tell them what happened, and the very next day... No pony breaks a Pinky promise! Applejack! You Pinky promise! I'm back, guys. That was a weird scene. Like, seriously, that was like Majin Buu levels of scariness when it comes, like, in an unintentional scariness. So after Applejack sees the Remain 5 chasing after her, she decides to try to run, and she says the stupidest line ever on the carriage, I need to get the heck out of Dodge. I see what you did there, and I don't like it. So, basically, now the Remain 5 grab a cart, which is a two-pony cart, and they begin chasing after Applejack. How are two ponies, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, able to keep up with four carriage ponies? You would think the four would be suspension of disbelief. So, they begin chasing her down to a point where, like, they're trying to get her to stop, like, bribing the, the carriage ponies to... To stop, like saying, like, we'll pay you triple, we'll pay you triple to stop, and, you know, basically putting out large sums of money. So at one point, Pinkie Pie jumps onto the carriage and demands an apology from Applejack, and Applejack does play a technicality idea, where uh, she promised to tell them at breakfast, but she didn't come to breakfast. So technically, she did not break her promise, because she didn't go to the breakfast to begin with. That's actually true. I mean, think about it. That is a technicality. That's a loophole. And she used the loophole. So, really, Pinkie Pie... Pinkie Pie's, com Pinkie Pie's, like, you know, argument is pretty much invalid at this point. So, Pinkie Pie jumps off the carriage and then knocks Rarity out of the carriage, which... And then, uh, and then, Rar and then pretty much, Rainbow Dash just says, like, no time. They knew what they were getting into. You just left Rarity and Pinkie on the side of the road. And that wasn't even Rarity's fault that Pinky got knocked out. That was like one of those bright things. Like Pinky jumped out, like Rarity catch me, and then she, boom, knocked out the carriage. So basically, Applejack causes the carriage to go past a train as it's about to pass over. And when she gets off, the carriage ponies leave her there. What happens next is that Applejack thinks she's safe, but of course, Pegasus. So Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy fly over the train and to where Applejack is. Applejack tries to run, and then she gets tackled by Rainbow Dash, where we see ribbons. Only, none of them are blue. Which means she did not win none of the competitions. And she even explained it like she came in fourth, third, and even second. She did not win one, one, she did not get one blue ribbon, and she didn't get any prize money. And she felt horrible because of this, because... Because of the large send-off that the town gave her, she did not want to come back to Ponyville a failure because of this situation. 
I can relate with this with so many ways because, like I said, the Counter-Strike tournament. Me and my team went to this Counter-Strike tournament thinking we were good, and we got absolutely murdered at the tournament. Like, badly murdered. I thought we were good, and in reality, we were we did not stack up to the, to the other players. So it was a very hard situation for me to grasp because, considering that I got such a nice send-off and such nice words for this tournament... And only for me to get destroyed at the tournament, I just felt like, God, everyone's going to change their opinion about me thanks to this. So I can relate with Applejack's like thought process with that. Then, of course, we get, well, this line from Fluttershy. Applejack, we can always find a way to fix that hole in the roof. But if you don't come back, we'll never be able to fix the hole in our hearts. Cliché ass. I hate to say it, but that's one thing that this episode is. It's cliched. Like, very cliched and very predictable. Like I keep saying, predictability is not a bad thing in an episode, as long as it's interesting. And like I said at the beginning of this episode, this episode is boring. And the moral of the episode is, like, when you're going through problems or hardships, to always look for, like, you know, always seek the, the comfort of your friends and family. That's a very good moral. Like, if you really think about it, that is a pretty good moral if you think about it. Because sometimes when you're going through a hardship, sometimes when you go through a tragic event or something like that, it's always good to go to, to seek comfort within your friends and family because they'll always be there to help you out. So that's where the episode ends, right? No. They show us one more scene where Rarity and Pinky are doing, like, you know, those, those push trains and are making their way back to Ponyville. You're telling me that Twilight, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy did not go back for Pinkie Pie and Rarity? They left them all the way in Dodge Junction? Great friends. Great friends. So let's get this straight. You tried to make Applejack talk about something that she doesn't want to. You used the, you tried to annoy her to the point that she didn't want to, so she would have no choice but to talk about it. And then you leave two of your best friends in Dodge Junction without thinking about it. Ah, this episode. This episode's a mixed bag for me. The reason why I say it's a mixed bag is because this episode is boring as hell, and it also has a bunch of things that I don't like in this episode, like a bunch of things that do aggravate me. Like the way that the Remain 5 approach Applejack. Like, I find that to be really mean. Like, it shows they have no respect for Applejack, the fact that they try so hard to coax this information out of her by pestering her and annoying her to get this information from her. You can't do that with a friend. You can't just pester and annoy them until they finally say something. No, that's going to be in line to get you hurt. And not to mention, like I said, this episode is boring. There is nothing interesting in this episode. There isn't a lot of humor in this episode. The story is very predictable, and it's cliched, like, painfully cliche at times. And I don't like the way that the main, the Remain 5 was portrayed in this episode. The only reason this is not, I don't consider this a bad episode is because of the relatable moral and Applejack's relatability. I relate to Applejack in this situation, and I can relate with this moral as well. It's those two factors that prevent it from being a bad episode. In my eyes, at least. Is it going to be a least favorite episode? It could. Kind of like Gilda, like Griffin the Brush Off. It's, yeah, the last roundup in my eyes is in the same league as Griffin the Brush Off. Relatable aspects, but everything else I don't like. And that's just being honest. Oh, no. I just looked at the next episode I got to talk about. Ah. Uh, kill me. Till next time, I'm Keen Out 47, aka Wolf Keen. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>